Hi there, I'm Dr. Terry Shaneyfelt for UAB School of Medicine. This is the first in a series of videos that will focus on basic statistical analyses. I've designed these video series for non-statisticians who want a general overview of how to analyze their data. I decided to make this series because these are hard concepts to understand. I struggled with them when I was learning, so I really hope I will do a good job of trying to explain everything as simply as possible. I plan to cover all the major statistical tests, but in this first video, I'll discuss planning your data file and checking your data for errors and missing values. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me on the Contact Me section of my blog, which is ebmteacher.com. So first, I thought I'd give you some research tips. First, no statistical test can fix a poorly done study, so make sure you design your study properly based on existing theories and research. Get help if you need to to do it right. Let others review your plan before you implement it. Plan your study carefully. Know what you're trying to achieve. Think ahead and anticipate problems because there will be some. Having others review your study and analysis plan will aid this greatly. Keep records of everything. Research involves lots of decisions and you'll forget why you made certain ones down the road. Keep a record of everything. Finally, build in wiggle room. Studies always tend to take longer than planned for a variety of reasons. Now this figure demonstrates the basic steps in a data analysis. First, you need to plan what types of data you will collect in your study. Will you use questionnaires or direct measurements? What types of variables will be collected? What will be your dependent and independent variables? Should you, you should prepare a code book, which is a summary of how you define and label variables and the values assigned to each of the possible responses or level of each variable. You should also include notes about decisions you make on recoding variables or transforming them, etc. And keep this in a very safe place. You don't want to lose it. The next step, you'll enter your data you collected either directly into the statistical analysis program or into a spreadsheet that you will later import into the statistical analysis package. After entering your data, you'll need to screen it for errors and any missing values. After you have a good, complete data set, you'll run some exploratory analyses to get a better handle on your data and see if the data meets the assumptions of the statistical test you plan to use. If it doesn't, you need to modify these variables that violate any statistical assumptions using a variety of te techniques, most commonly being transformation. Finally, you do the fun part that you see reported in papers. You'll use statistical tests to explore relationships and compare groups in your study. And in this video series, we'll go through how to conduct each of these statistical tests. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to focus on some ways you can check your data file for errors and any missing values. When checking for errors, you are mainly doing two things. Looking for values of variables that fall outside the range of possible values. And then you're also looking for missing data. So first, let's talk about making sure that the values of your variables take on only the values they're supposed to. So for this, you can use the statistical analysis package or your spreadsheet to do this. You want to look at minimum and maximum values for each variable. Make sure that no results are outside of this. You could also look at frequency tables for each variable, or you could just sort the variables from lowest to highest or vice versa and make sure that there are no values, values outside the possible range. Now remember, I talked about that code book, and this is a time when you want to open up your code book and make sure that all the values are for each variable fall within the range that you put in your code book. Next, you also want to check for consistency of your data. For example, let's say you collected data on gender and data on pregnancies. We'd want to make sure that no males are listed as having been pregnant. Finally, you want to check for missing data either by eyeballing your data set to make sure every cell in your spreadsheet contains data. And this can be a little daunting if you have a very large data set. Or the simple way is to look at frequency outputs and look for the results of any missing data. So let's look at an example of this with a real data set. So here's a data set that looks at the safety of vehicles and the score was dichotomized into safe or unsafe based on size, weight, region of production, and type of vehicle. Now one of the things we could do is we could just eyeball this data set and look to see that every cell has a value inside of it. And we can see there are 96 total vehicles that were looked at. And just eyeball and I can see that every cell has a data point so there's no missing data. 
But like I mentioned earlier, if you have a very large data set, this is a daunting task. So it sometimes is much easier to do some basic analysis. And this is in SPSS. I like to use SPSS because that's uh, what I have access to. So I'm just going to look at frequencies. And the thing that SPSS does is puts all the variables that are in this um, data set over here. And I just move over here the one I want to look at. So I'm just going to look at, in this particular case, the coding for unsafe and to see if I have all my values present and that they stay within it. And so I'll go to statistics. All I really care about for this analysis is minimum, maximum values. I don't really care about much else. And I'll plot a little chart of histogram just because sometimes looking at things visually is a little bit better. And when I do this, I get the output, which shows that I, a minute ago when I looked at the spreadsheet, I had 96 values, and sure enough, 96 show up here. I have no missing values. And my range of values can be 0 or 1. The car is either safe or unsafe. But if I look at this, this is what the code book basically says the two values could be. What I really want to do is also look at my frequency chart and make sure I have values distributed across both of them. I could also look at my histogram and see that in fact that I do. Now the other thing that I want to look at is I'd like to be able to uh, look at the consistency of my data like I mentioned. So one of the things I could do is I have the size of the vehicle variable and one of the things I could do is I want to make sure if a vehicle is, is large by this coding that it also is large by type over here. So one of the things I can do is I could sort this. So I'm just going to sort by ascending and it will put them in size from uh, smallest as I go down to largest. And what I want to do is just eyeball across here and see that all my ones which are small vehicles correspond to small vehicles or sports cars. When I get here to two, there are two medium vehicles. When I get down here to three, there are two larger or sport utility vehicles. So I see there's consistency in my data set. So I've made sure that every cell has a value. I've made sure that all the values fall within the range that I've put in my code book. And I've checked some way, whatever makes sense for my data, to look for consistency. So now that I've made sure my data set has no errors and no missing values, I can go on and do some basic exploratory analyses and descriptive statistics.